Hi everyone, so this video is a continuation of my last video where we created the Jones Snow Cholera map. So the couple of things that I wanted to cover in this video is how we can run or how we can generate some statistics for our uh, this visualization visualization to support our claims. So right now we have uh, some lines that are being connected to a pump so to make it more distinct what we can or to make the pump data points distinct what we can do is we can click on this pump layer and we can probably assign a new symbol for the pump so as to make it distinct so now we can see that we have the pumps over here pump over here another one over here another one over here Another one over here, which has the largest number of deaths connected to this pump, and likewise some other data, pump, some other pump in this area is over here, and this one over here does not have any deaths associated with it. So this one looks better than with what we had. And the next thing that we can add to this graph is assigning the numbers. That is, assigning the ID value. That is, if we look at this data. That is, if we open up the attribute table, we can see that each of these pumps, they have a number or they have an ID associated with it. So right now, we cannot tell whether this is pump 1, pump 2, or pump 3. So let's just add its ID value to it. So for that, what we can do is we can double click on it, this layer, and we can go over to the labels, click on the tab, click on the sync labels, and this data over here is only got the ID value, so we can say that this layer should have the ID as its identifier, and that ID value should show up in our, in our interface. So if we do that, now we can see that this is pump number two, this one is pump number four, this one is pump number four, pump number one, sorry. So right now, as you can see that based on this visualization, we can tell that Pump number one has the highest number of deaths associated with it. That's what our visualization says. And let's say we would like to insert some quantitative data in our research paper. So for that, what we can do is we can run a tool called the group stats in the QGIS. I already have it installed on machine. Chances are you don't have it installed. So for that, what you can do is you can go over to this plugins tab over here click on install plugins you should see up you should see a new window open up i already have it installed so it's going to show up as uh, already as an already installed plugin since you don't have since you may not have it so what you're going to do is you are going to have this plugin installed in your machine or in your QGIS environment so after you have it installed you should be able to see the group stat, uh, group stats option or group stat icon in your QGIS interface all the way on your right hand side. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on it. Okay, and that should open up my this window. So if you're familiar with the Excel paper tables, it's this group stat window is going to look something very similar to that one. So for this one, I'm only interested in, uh, in assigning the total number of deaths to each of the pumps. And the layer that I the, and the layer of interest for this purpose is the hop distance. So uh, before I do that, let me just go back and click on the hop distance layer. So if you click on this and if you click on the open attribute table, you will see that each of these hubs or each of these pumps, they have a death value or a death count associated with it. And each of these is, in, uh, is represented as a separate row. But now my interest is that instead of like in having this count of deaths represented in a separate row, I would just like to have that, I would just like to have this death counts aggregated in a single row that is one row per hub or one row for each hub for example if uh, there are 30 deaths associated with hub number one or pump number one 
instead of having that data represented as 2, 1, 5, or 2, 4, 1, 2, I would just like to have one row that would represent half number 1 and the total number of deaths associated with it. So half number 1, 30, half number 2, 15, half number 3, uh, 10, 5, something like that. So that's what we're trying to do with the group stat function. So I'm going to go back over here, click on the uh, group stats. And now what I'm going to do is, since my layer of interest is half distance, this is going to be an active layer. And I'm going to put this as a row. And this uh, is uh, the variable that has the death count information. And right now I'm only interested in summing up this count value or the death value. So I'm going to bring this function over here. I could bring it here, that's no problem at all, but I'll just put it up as a column, as a sum function. But you could also use uh, with this group stat toolbox, you could also use it to calculate or to compute certain very descriptive statistics like you know median, uh, mean, max, variance, all those kind of descriptive statistics you could compute for your data set with this toolbox. So for now, I'm only interested in summing up those death value such that there is only going to be one row for each hub. So now that I have all these set up, I'm just going to click on calculate. And this is going to give me an output that is going to look something like this. So we can tell that hub number zero, which is right over here, it has 65 deaths associated with it. And hub number one, it has 340 deaths associated with it, which is exactly what we can see from here. We have um, too many lines that are being directed towards this pump number one. And from this information or this data over here, we can tell that there are 340 deaths associated with with pump number one and our and the information that is reflected by our visualization is in alignment with our uh, this aggregate data that we created using the group stats function and likewise you can see that there is no data for pump number six and if we go back to our visualization there is no line that is coming or that is being directed into pump number six because we don't really have any death record associated to pump number six. That is why we don't really have any record or aggregate data value for pump number six. So we can tell that this information is pretty much in alignment with our visualization. So this thing was not covered in our covered in my last video where we created the Jones Snow Cholera map. But this again, I think is a very useful information if this is something that you'd like to put up in your research paper. So I just wanted to bring this up in this video. Thanks so much for watching, guys.